Hello, welcome back. Matt from MrLiker.com. In today's video, we're going to look at the Canon Model 7, which is a 35mm range finder camera and a great alternative for those tempted by Likers but don't want to pay the money. In today's video, we'll go through the camera spec and make comparisons to both a Leica M2 and a Leica 3 camera, and then we'll summarize as to whether or not this camera may suit you. Okay, let's take a look. Now first things first, this video is slightly different in that I no longer have my Canon Model 7 camera so I can't kind of do the usual, ooh here's the camera, this is what it looks like from the front, from the back, from the side and so on. But don't worry, from the help of eBay I picked up some example photos and we'll use those to talk through the camera specifications. So before we look at the camera spec, what is the Canon Model 7? This is a 35mm range finder camera released in 1961, which is four years after the release of the amazing Leica M2. Obviously I do have this camera, so I can show you what this camera looks like. Great camera. We'll compare to this camera as we go through. So the Canon Model 7 was released four years after the M2, which was released in 1957. And the Canon 7 also followed the very popular Canon P. The Canon P was released in 1959, and then the Canon 7 is the, the camera that followed. I guess firstly, if anybody trying to decide between the Canon 7 and the Canon P, I decided to go for the Canon 7 because it has a more magnified rangefinder. That's one of the benefits. Obviously the Canon 7 is the latest camera, so it has more advantages or more improvements than just the magnified rangefinder. But when looking to buy a Canon camera myself, just to test it out, that's why I went for the Model 7 rather than the Model P. And now I know everyone likes fast lenses, so did you know that the Canon Model 7 was designed to be used with the official Dream Lens, as it's called, which is the amazing Canon 50mm 0.95. So as you can see here, if you get the camera and the lens in black, it looks absolutely amazing. As I say, this camera is designed to be used with this lens, so it shows how good the rangefinder should be, which gave me a lot of hope. Okay, in terms of camera specs, so let's look at the front of the camera first. The first thing you probably notice is that big window top left. That is a selenium light meter. Selenium light meters don't require batteries, but you may find in some cameras the, the light meter doesn't work. Personally, I use handheld light meters, so I never really use the light meter function. What you also may notice from the mount of the camera, this is a Leica thread mount camera design, not a Leica M mount design. So like a thread mount, also known as like a screw mount or L39. So that's the same mount as the Leica 3 camera design. The ones I really like. So not like M mount. Make a mental note of this if you're into your like M mount lenses because they will not fit this camera. So next to the mount you have the self timer. And then if you look top right, that big window is the big bright viewfinder. Now this viewfinder has a 0.8 magnification and is parallax corrected, making the Canon 7 much more advanced compared to the older Leica 3 cameras. Those cameras, except for the 3G, are not parallax corrected. And also the viewfinder is absolutely tiny. So if you like big, bright viewfinders, you may enjoy this camera. For anybody interested, the window top middle of the camera is to let light in to illuminate the frame lines. It kind of gathers light. Okay, if we now look on the top of the camera, working from left to right, you have your film rewind crank. That is different to a Leica M2 and a Leica M3, which use the rewind knob design. Rewind cranks are faster if you're working in kind of a fast paced environment. Now next to that is a really nice feature. This is the frame line selector, meaning I like the like M design where you fit the lens and it automatically displays the correct frame line. With the Canon 7, you manually select the frame lines you want on the top of the camera. The Canon Model 7 was quite advanced for its time and it offers single thid 5mm frame line, single 50mm frame line, the 8, 5 and 100mm frame lines shown as a pair, and the 135mm frame line. This is more options than the like M2, which only offers you 35, 50, and 90. Next to the frame line selector dial is the display for the light meter. As I say, I didn't really use this feature, but if you want to read the exposure from the light meter, that's the display that you use to do so. Okay, working across again, everyone knows probably what that is. That is your shutter speed select dial. So you have shutter speeds from bulb all the way through to 1 over 1000, which is the same as the Leica M2. And it has a flash sync of 1 over 60. The flash sync of the Leica M2 is 1 over 50. Okay, next that you have your shutter release button, but you also have a dial on the outside with an A and an R. I think of the A as kind of advanced, meaning you take pictures, i.e. going forward. 
meaning you need the dial set to the A when you are taking pictures. And then when you come to rewind your film, I think of R as rewind. So you need to turn the dial then to the R to then use your rewind crank to remove your film. So just think A for taking pictures, R for rewind. Next that you obviously have your film advance lever and your shutter dial and your automated exposure counter. Now the automated counters are quite good because if you're forgetful like me, you might forget to zero your frame counter on a Leica M2, which needs to be reset manually before you start taking pictures. Just to note the same is true on the older Leica 3 cameras. You need to manually set it to zero before you start taking pictures. And I always forget. So ticking the box for Canon 7, that would save me in this situation. Okay, if we now look at the base of the camera, on the right hand side, as displayed in the picture, you have your tripod socket. And then on the left hand side, you have your film back lock, or I guess you'd call it. So you need to turn the lock, which then frees the kind of flat pin, which you see on the left hand side of the camera. And when you turn the lock on the base of the camera, that pin goes in and then you can open the back of the camera. Also looking on the side of the camera, if you look on the top left hand side, you can also see the PC sync port. So if you're doing off camera flash, that's where you plug in your flash. Okay, if we now open the back of the camera, you can see it has a very easy fast load design, very similar to say the Casino Voigtlander Besser R or any of the other uh, better range of cameras. They have the easy kind of quick load film design. For anybody not used to using like M cameras, like M cameras, you have to open a door this way and then load the film from the bottom which sounds slightly difficult, but you get used to it really quick. And then if you've never used a Leica 3 camera, Leica 3 cameras have no door at the back at all. So you have to do everything via the bottom plate. Again, you get used to it really quickly, but maybe not for the faint hearted. If you've never shot that camera before, you'd be like, where's the door? <laughs> so the Canon 7 is obviously really easy to load in that respect, like any SLR camera. I guess just to point out for anybody new to film photography, to load the film, you would insert your fresh film cassette on the left hand side of the camera. You would pull the film across and you would tuck in the film lead on the right hand side film spool. And then basically shut the back, advance a few frames and you're good to go in terms of film loading. Also, if you look closer on the inside of the camera, the Canon Model 7 has a stainless steel shutter, which is different to the cloth shutter of the Leica M cameras. One advantage of stainless steel shutters is you cannot burn holes in them by leaving your camera in direct sunlight. So they're said to be kind of more durable. That said, I've never had any problems with any of my cameras using cloth shutters. Right, so that was a basic overview of the camera spec. Now in terms of size and weight, this is where I really wish I still had the camera. I guess I should have mentioned at the start, this is my second attempt at making this video. I recorded a 40 minute video showing lots of close-ups of Leica next to Canon in every angle and then I lost all my footage and I'd already sold the camera at that point so I have no Canon 7 kind of prop to show you guys. What I was trying to demonstrate in my previous version of this video was I had the Canon next to the Leica M camera showing that the Canon is bigger in every dimension. So the Canon 7 is taller, it is wider and it is deeper, only slightly, but in every dimension, it is, it is larger. Not only that, the Canon 7 is quite a square looking camera, whereas the Leica M camera is much more rounded. I'll come onto that at the end of the video. And then remember the Canon 7 is like a thread mount, so you could compare it to a Leica 3 camera. The Leica 3 camera is considerably smaller in every dimension. So that's the size. What about the weight? Now again, the differences are quite considerable. If you're someone interested in camera weight such as myself, the Canon Model 7 weighs 875 grams, the Leica M2 weighs 560 grams, and the Leica 3A weighs 432 grams. So you can carry two Leica 3 cameras, obviously without the lens on, for the same weight as one Canon camera. You can see where I'm going with this. But stay with me, the Canon does offer a lot of benefits. Okay, another important factor, price. How much does the Canon 7 cost? Now I did my usual check on eBay. Again, if you want to see how I get the most out of eBay, check out my recent tips and tricks eBay video. You might find that useful. So I checked eBay and the average price seems to be less than 200 pounds. Anything from as little as 150 pounds, 180 pounds, going up to maybe 200 pounds for a mint condition Canon 7. How does that compare to a like M2? Currently the Leica M2 costs you around £750 minimum price 
and then the price goes higher after that again depending on condition so you can get three Canon cameras for the price of one Leica camera again make a mental note <laughs> And maybe just for completeness, again, because the Canon 7 uses the same mount as the Leica 3, Leica 3 cameras cost roughly the same price as the Canon Model 7. So it's almost a one for one. I'd say, if anything, the Leica cameras may be slightly more expensive now. Whether that means they're more desirable or the demand is higher than the supply. Okay, so if we try to summarize, let's look at some of the pros and cons comparing to the Leica cameras that I've showed you. The first big pro is obviously the price. It is over three times cheaper than a Leica M2 and it is around the same price as a Leica 3 camera. If you compare the Canon 7 to say a much more recent Casino Voigtlander Besser camera such as as I say the, the Besser R, the Besser T, Besser L, Besser R3A all those cameras are very plastic built but they offer a lot of features. Those cameras are generally more expensive than the Canon camera but I'd say the Canon 7 is more like a like in that it is kind of solid metal and feeling quite well built. The better cameras tend to be much more plastic and they kind of feel like they may not last forever. One big plus the Canon 7 offers for me is the viewfinder. Not only does it offer the 35mm, 50mm, 85mm, 100mm and 135mm frame lines, it's also 0.8 magnification and parallax corrected. That automatically makes it much more useful than all the Leica 3 cameras kind of in one fell swoop as it were. <laughs> so what about the cons? The main con for me was weight. Weight and ergonomics. Now this is purely personal preference. If you're someone that likes a solid big camera, then you may actually much prefer the Canon 7 to say like a 3 camera. I just happen to like the, the really small, compact, lightweight cameras. I've marked it as a negative in this video because this is what I base my purchase decisions on and also why I no longer have the Canon 7. And so the main cons for me, the weight was twice the weight of the like a 3 camera and I just didn't like the kind of the this, this square edges. It sounds really stupid. I'm normally much more about the final image than I am whether a camera's got silver bits here or black bits here. I know some people are really picky in that it needs to be black and it needs to have a matching lens and blah, blah, blah. I'm not as bothered about that. I just, one, need it to work. Two, I need a really good range finder. And then three, it just needs to feel, feel good. And I really didn't like it. I couldn't put my finger on it, but because I was doing the Leica M2, for me, the Canon 7 doesn't come close to a Leica M2 in terms of kind of enjoyment of using the camera. I may sound like a complete Leica fanboy, and I'm sorry if I do. I'm just lucky enough that I had both cameras compare side by side. If you've only ever used the Canon 7, then you may think it's amazing. If you've only used the Canon 7 and say a Bessar R, again, you'll think the Canon 7 is probably really well built and blah, blah, blah. And it is compared to most cameras. But compared to Leicas, Maybe that is a tall order, that kind of comparison, but I find the Leica cameras much more beautiful and just much more enjoyable to, to use. I think partly the look of these cameras, I think it's partly kind of the rounded edges and the weight and it just fits in your hand really nicely. And the Canon 7 just felt a bit brick-like. So again, personal preference. And one main negative, which I forgot to mention during the camera spec, so I'll bring up a photo of the top of the camera again quickly. So looking at the top of the camera model 7, what do you notice? Just to maybe give you some ideas, look at the top of the Leica M2 top and the Leica 3 bottom. Okay, look in the middle of look in the middle of the top plate. Now let's go to the picture of the Canon 7. Do you see a problem? The Canon 7 doesn't have a hot shoe. Now this is fine if you don't shoot flash, you don't use a hot shoe light meter, or you don't use external viewfinders. But if you use any of those, it's going to be an issue. Now I must point out, if you can find one, Canon made a bracket which fitted above the top of the camera with a hot shoe on specifically to kind of resolve this issue with the camera design. But I don't know how easy it would be to find one on eBay, so I'm marking this as a negative. So the negative is you cannot use wide angle hot shoe viewfinders or cold shoe viewfinders. It's a cold shoe, not a hot shoe. Sorry to cause confusion. The kind of the shoe on the like M2 and the like a three cameras are cold shoes because they're kind of they're not powered so this is kind of a slot on the top of the camera obviously on a modern camera they're called hot shoes because they are powered meaning you can fire your speed lights and so on but in this example the problem with the canon 7 it has no hot shoe why is that a problem it's a problem because you cannot shoot the camera with wide lenses because you will not be able to see to compose so for example for me i enjoy using the like a three cameras 
with wide lenses. This is actually the Canon 25mm, which you'll see in a future video. To use a 25mm lens on any camera, you need to use a 25mm hot shoe viewfinder. Because there's no hot shoe on the Canon 7, you cannot use this lens on that camera, meaning you won't be able to see to compose. So the same problem would exist regardless of whether it's a 28mm lens, 25mm lens, 21mm lens, say the Voigtlander Scope R 21f4, or even a 15mm super wide Helia Voigtlander. All of those lenses need hot shoe viewfinders, and you cannot mount that onto your Model 7. Therefore, for me, that's a negative. Obviously, if you only shoot 35mm to 135mm, you can disregard that negative. And if you like big, heavy, solid cameras, you can disregard all the negatives because that's the only things I could find as a negative compared to my existing cameras. Okay, so what's the verdict? Would I recommend this camera? Yes, I would recommend this camera if you want a affordable 35mm rangefinder camera and maybe kind of a taster of what it might be like if to own a Leica camera. Obviously Leica M film cameras are now expensive, so you could maybe first get a Canon 7, see if you like the rangefinder experience. If you then enjoy it, you could then maybe look to get a Leica in the future, if you felt the need to get a Leica that is. I'd say the Canon Model 7 is excellent for 35mm, particularly because I think for 50mm I would choose a Leica 3 camera. Like a three cameras have the fixed 50mm viewfinder, except the 3G, which has the 90mm frame line and the 50mm frame line. So, for me, when I'm trying to pick different tools for different jobs, I would always go for the Leica 3 for 50mm lenses and wide angle lenses. I'd actually go for Leica M3, which we've not talked about in this video. Again, you can see the review like M2 versus like M3, which I've already recorded. I'd choose the Leica M3 for portraits and fast 50mm lenses and Leica M mount lenses because it has the best viewfinder, that being the highest magnification. The Canon 7 has a 0.8 magnification, the Leica M3 has a 0.91 magnification, which is a big deal when you come to look through the viewfinder. I'd use a Leica M2 for 35mm and not the Canon. I'd use a Leica M3 for 50mm and not the Canon. I'd use a Leica M3 for 90mm and not the Canon, again, which is why I've sold it. And so to wrap up this video, does the Canon 7 offer anything extra to the like M film cameras? I'd say here's your like M2 in this example. Here is your Canon 7. Here is your like a 3 camera. In terms of kind of what they offer, the like M3 camera is small, beautiful, very well made, but offers very few kind of functions. Is this, the Canon 7 is a similar price to the like a 3, but offers a lot of functionality, but it's not quite there in terms of the pleasing like M experience. And then you have the like M cameras, which offer the same functionality roughly as the Canon, but the beautiful build quality of the like a three cameras. Because I have the cameras above and below in this kind of three camera scenario, there's no point in me keeping the Canon. So it was really great to test the camera because some of you guys have mentioned to me in the past, why don't you get a Canon? They offer such great value for money. And they absolutely do offer amazing value for money. If you've not already seen my Voigtlander Besser series reviews, I would say for anybody looking to get the Voigtlander Besser R, the Canon Model 7 is a great alternative. Uh, better built and a lot of similar kind of functionality. So that's my two pieces on this camera. I'm sorry that I'm reviewing it from maybe a Leica slant. I do use a lot of non-Leica cameras, such as cheap Soviet cameras and various other cameras. So I'd like to think this is a fair roundup. And as I say, the only negatives I've already had were all personal preference. So if your personal preference is the opposite to my personal preference, with the exception of no hot shoe, and if you like shooting wide lenses, that's the only real negative for kind of general use. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you take a second to hit the like button. That means more people will hopefully get to see the video and maybe we get more people shooting film, which is never a bad thing. If you use the Canon P or the Canon 7, let me know in the comments if you agree with my thoughts on the camera today. And if you've not yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. I noticed from the YouTube analytics that two thirds of you are not yet subscribed, so there's a chance you're gonna miss all the future videos because you're not getting the notifications. That might be a good thing if you don't enjoy my videos, but assuming you like film cameras, lens reviews, things like that, 
you might find it useful to subscribe. Finally, as always, a big thank you to my patrons. I'll see you back here in the next episode. Bye.